Turn with me this morning. We're going to go to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 17. Amen. 1 Samuel 17. And we're going to talk about David and Goliath this morning. Amen. How many of you know that metaphorically we all have a Goliath in our life? Amen. Amen. And we're going to learn from David this morning what we do with our giants. Praise the Lord. 1 Samuel 17, and we're going to start in verse 4. And it says, And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath whose height was six cubics and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail that weighed, the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. He had a bronze armor on his legs and bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now listen, now the staff of the spear was like a weaver's beam, and his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels, and a shield bearer went before him. Okay, now listen to me. What that means is that he was over nine feet tall. You, you guys, this is, this is a 10 or a 12 foot ceiling now. What do you think? 12, I think it's a 12 foot ceiling. So this is 12, so about three foot less than the ceiling. Now I can reach eight feet on my toes like this. So it's another foot taller than my, that's how tall Goliath. You, you guys get a picture here? And then he was not just tall, he was big. He was a big, now listen to me. It said that it was a 125 pound coat of armor that he wore. His coat of armor weighed 125 pounds. Most of us couldn't lift 125, right? Amen. We won't go there, right? Praise the Lord. It says, now listen, and he carried a giant spear with him. And that spear, the tip of the spear, not, not the whole weight of the spear, the tip was 15 pounds. 15, that means he held it like this with a 15 pound on the beam and hurled the spear. So let me ask you, was that a big man? Amen. That was a big man. Amen. So in the next, you see a man that size, what are you thinking? Run. Run. <laughs> and that's exactly what the whole army of the Israelites was doing because the Bible says for 40 days he had come down into this we have now listen we got the Philistines on one side we got the children of the Lord on the other side right yeah. just like today listen to me we got the devil on one side we got the Lord on the other side yeah. and every day this giant of a man every day this giant of a man came down and mocked the living God yeah. Every day he came down, he said, I defy the army of the Lord. And he said that I say, you send me one man. Why do we all got to fight? Why do we? Now, listen, if the children of Israel would have been intelligent when he walked down there by himself, they all would have fought. Amen. You know, there is power in collective prayer. There's power in the unity of the church. Yes. And that one man could not have withstood the armies. Yes. You, are you with yes. me this morning? Yes. But they were so afraid of the one man on an individual basis that nobody would go down to fight this gentleman. And, and let me ask you, if you're in the army and you're on this side, are you volunteering? <laughs> is it, is it going to be you that goes? You, you see what I'm saying? Yes. B because we're so quick to criticize yes. When somebody else fails and makes a mistake, when somebody else isn't standing strong in the faith and what they believe, in the moment of weakness that somebody goes through, we're quick to judge, amen? And we're quick to get on our self-righteous indignation and start declaring how we would have handled that problem. Well, listen, you would have handled the problem just like they did, quaking in your boots, hiding behind a tree. Amen? Amen. But now listen to me. You can read this story for yourself. We're just going to run through it. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that David was tending his father's sheep. Amen. Amen. And daddy said, hey, I want you to go down and check on your brothers because they had three boys that were in the army down there. So daddy says, David, I need you to go down there and see what's happening and take some food and some cheese and some bread and some crackers. Come on now and take some, come on, take some stuff down there. Make sure my boys are doing well. So as David's walking down and he hands these things in, here comes that giant down from the side. Come on now. 
And David, now, now listen, this is paraphrase. You can read the whole story. But David hears what this giant has to say. He is dumbfounded and amazed. Yes. That nobody yes. is willing to stand up for God. Amen. Do you realize that we're living in a nation that's having a challenge? Right. Yes. With men and women willing to stand yes. up for God. Yes. You see, there's a few people, there's a remnant church that's like David. That we're ready to go to war spiritually, amen? That we're ready to take this nation back spiritually. Are you with me this morning? But see, Satan has defiled this nation. They call it choice. They call it a lot of things this morning. But listen, it is a Goliath that has defiled the living God. Amen. Now see, David, when he came down and he heard what this giant, he said, what's the king going to do for the guy who wins? You understand what I'm saying? Now, now we got to love on him. He might have been walking a little bit in the natural, wanting to know what the reward was going to be. Are you with me this morning? But listen to me. He never doubted for one second in his mind that he was going to go down there and defeat that giant. Amen. Can you believe that? Amen. You read the story about David. He was a little guy, yes. Yes. right? You guys read that story? He's a little guy. And so here's a little guy going to take on not just a big guy, yes. but a giant. Amen. Yes. You, now, let me ask you, what giant are you facing yes. this morning? Yes. You see, your giant might be finances. How many of you had a giant of finances? Amen. Yes. Your giant might be health. Your giant might be disease. You're, you see what I'm saying? Whatever you're facing in the natural is your giant this morning. But let me ask you, how big is the David in you this morning? How big is the David in you this morning? You see, David said, he's all mine. He's all mine. And so word gets back to the king, right? You guys are reading the story. Word gets back to the king. So the king calls David on over to come see him. And the king's like, really? This is my best option? This little, the little guy. <laughs> right, Teresa, we root for the little guy. Amen. It's the little guy. That's the one. You got to watch out for them little guys. Amen. Those quiet little guy. So Saul finally says, well, all right. But what does he do? He says, get my armor. Get my armor. And, and David tries to put on Saul's armor. Can you just picture it? Saul was a big man. Over six foot, I believe Saul was. He was a big man. He got this little five foot trying to put on his. Could you imagine when he put the helmet on? <laughs> Come on now. And he tried to put on that armor and it'd be like. <laughs> it's like, hey, I'm going to fight like this. Right. <laughs> so he had to take off that armor. Yes. All right. Now, listen to me. Some of you are trying to fight in somebody else's armor. Amen. You see, you got a giant in your life, yes. but you're trying to fight it either on somebody else's faith yes. or you're trying to fight other challenges and things and you're using things now. Listen to me like pride mm. to help fight your fight. Mm. See, you, you're using things and you're, and you're thinking that finances can help fight your fight. Yes. Amen. Yes. Come on now. And, and you're thinking that your, your good looks... can help you fight your fight. And so you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. You see, you got your armor on, but it's, it doesn't fit you Amen. because it's not your spiritual armor. Remember last Amen. week what we Amen. talked about? Yes. Amen. The armor of God. Amen. Yes. And getting your, that's the armor that we need to be wearing. Amen. Yes. See, that's the armor that David had on. Amen. Because yes. you remember when, just before he put it, when he's standing before the king and the king, I said, how do you think you're going to get this man? How are you going to kill him? He said, listen to me. I was tending my father's sheep and a lion came and the lion tried to take the sheep and I slew the lion and I saved the sheep from his mouth. 
come on now. And he said, and then a bear came. Yeah. See, n now listen to me. You, you know, the best thing about if you're going to go bear hunting, you know, the most important part of bear hunting is take somebody that you can outrun. Amen. <laughs> come on now. That's why Bubba is my hunting buddy. Come on now. I'm going to be praying for him all the while I'm running to the truck. <laughs> but see, David said, I slew the lion and I slew the bear. He said, God delivered me from the lion. God delivered me from the bear. He knew that he didn't fight the lion or the bear in his own strength. Right. He knew that he didn't stand on anything other than the, you understand what I'm saying, that God, he gave God the glory, the credit. He knew that the same God right. yeah. that delivered him from the lion and delivered him from the bear was going to deliver him from That's this right. uncircumcised Philistine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Are you with me this Amen. morning? You've got to realize and understand. Now, listen, my Bible says that Satan goes around like a roaring lion, like, a, you got to get that part, okay? Seeking whom he may devour. If David already slew the lion, he already slew the metaphor for Satan, amen? He, and he knew that all Goliath was was another mouthpiece for Satan. See, some of you need to realize that some of the stuff you're facing is just the mouthpiece of Satan. Are you with me? We wrestle not That's against right. flesh and blood, right? Amen. We wrestle. Come on now. Yeah. And so some of the things that we're fighting, we got to get our spiritual armor tuned up and turned on. Amen. Right. Amen. And start realizing if you stand in faith according to the word, if you stand in faith according to the Bible, listen, David, when he came down from the side of his mountain, and he's hit it down. The Bible says he stopped by the spring, and he got what? Five smooth stones? Yes, yes, yes. You know, a lot of people want to want to make this big deal about why he chose five, this reason, that reason. You know, it only took one. We all know the end of the story. Uh, don't get caught up on why he picked five. Right, right, right. You realize five's not really important to the story, amen? Right, right. We can make yeah. doctrine all over why he chose five. Right. But, but listen, let me ask you once again, once again. What if you come down off the mountain? Come on. Right? No, you wouldn't have. Amen? Right. Let's just be honest, right? So the Bible says that he took five smooth stones. And when Goliath saw him coming, what did Goliath do? He started laughing. And then he was insulted. Can you believe that? He was insulted. What, am I like a dog? He said, you're going to send a young man to chase me away with a stick? Right? He said he was insulted. Yeah. But you know, David said, listen to me. He said, you come at me with a sword and a spear. Yeah. But how how'd David come at him? Yeah. He said, I come at you in the name yeah. of the Lord God. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. When you're speaking to your yeah. giant, how are you coming at him this morning? How are you coming? Are you coming at the trials and tribulations in your life? Are you telling your finances, I'm coming at you in the name of the heavenly Father who said in his word, come on now, are you coming at sickness and disease? Are you saying, I'm coming at you in the name of the Father in the word where it says he sent his word and he healed them all? Are you speaking the word when you're coming at your giant? Are you coming at your giant under the power and the authority? Authority of the God Almighty are, are you mm. so now listen David said I come and then what did David do my Bible says he started sprinting he's now listen most of us are thinking <laughs> but my Bible says that he started sprinting he is literally at a run hitted towards the giant now, this is the same giant that the whole army, yeah. the whole army of the, is still cowering up there behind trees, and they sent this little young man down there. And trust me, do you really think any of them thought he had a chance? No. Do, you, do you think that they were getting ready to start running? You understand what I'm saying? But here is one man yeah. who came in the name of the Lord 
And he said, I come to you. And he sprinted at the giant. Yeah. All right, are you with me this morning? Do you realize now, listen to me, the thing, the trap, the snare, the weapon that the enemy has laid out for you this morning, God will take what he intended for evil and turn it for good. Because see, David started running at this giant this morning and then he pulled one of those smooth stones out of his pocket, right? Come on now, put it in his sling and he started doing that while he's a running. Praise the Lord, he had been practicing on the lion and the bear. Amen. Amen. He is running at him at a full sprint and he's twirling and he let that thing fly. Let me tell you, I'm telling you, you guys think that Tomahawk missiles were the first guided missiles that ever was. I'm telling you that rock was a guided missile. It was guided by the hands of the father because here's a man. You got a picture this giant of a man with his helmet, with his, with his gear on, with his legs, with all of his protection and everything that he had. Now he had one weak spot. One weak spot right there. Right there. The only chink in his armor, man. It, it, good thing he didn't have a ratchet, amen. He had knocked himself out, praise the Lord. He had one vulnerability, one spot, only one. And that one rock that, where did that rock hit? Bullseye. Bam. Right? Mm. Now, don't tell me that wasn't a guided missile. Amen. Can you just picture the Holy Spirit and the angels just holding on? And... Come on now. And you worry about things in your life. Are you with me this morning? Do you realize that the same God that guided that rock is the same one that's guiding you through whatever it is you're facing? That's the same one that's going to deliver you from the giant of your life? Now, listen, the giant told David that he was going to cut his head off, right, with his sword and feed his carcass to the birds. Isn't that what the giant said? Isn't it interesting? Come on now, that once the giant fell, David had no sword now because David told the giant the same thing, amen? He was, come on, he was a very confident young man. And so now he's running down there, the giant's, you know, laying on the ground. What does David do? My Bible says he takes his sword. Now listen to me, that's the sword that was supposed to cut off David's head. That's the sword that everybody around assumed was going to be victorious in battle. That's the weapon that the devil thought that, you see what I'm saying? That he was going to enslave the children of Israel. The same weapon that the devil was going to use for his purpose, God changed and turned around for his purpose, and David used that weapon. And can you imagine this point? That had to be Holy Spirit strength and gumption. This little guy wielding this huge sword, picking that sword up, cutting his head off. Now, we don't want to be too gross. We don't. Amen. But then it's like, ha ha! <laughs> Some of you need to give a aha to the devil once in a while. Amen. Right. Right. That same sword, that same weapon mm -hmm. that in the natural everyone assumed Goliath was going to use to take care of David and the children of Israel, yes. the Lord used in David's hands to take, you understand what I'm saying yes, this morning? Yes. So let me ask you, mm -hmm. how big is your giant? How big is your giant? What giant are you facing this morning? Yes. What giant is coming at you this morning? And how about you standing with the same faith and confidence that David had this morning? Now listen to me. Not only did he know that he was going to win that fight. Listen, he ran to the fight. He ran to the fight. Some of us need to get to running. Running, not with the devil. Come on now. At the devil. Running at him with your sling and yes. your stone. That's yes. your word. That's your message. That's your faith, your hope. Yes. Amen. And use what God gave you to slay the giant in your life and then use that weapon against them. Yes. Amen. Amen. My Bible, now listen, does your Bible, mine says that every weapon that rises against it, he'll put down. Yeah, that's 
Isn't that what it says? Every tongue that comes against it, he'll quiet. Isn't that what it says? Yes. Doesn't it say that we're victorious in every battle? Yes. Doesn't it say that we're above only and not beneath? Doesn't it say that we're blessed when we go in? That we're You see, how much of the word are you quoting over your life? How much of the word are you declaring to your giant? It is written. It is written. You see, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin again. Do you realize that falling into fear is sin? Do you realize that falling out of faith is sin? Do you realize doubting what God said he'd do for you is sin? So thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against him means I stay strong in my faith. You understand what I'm saying? Now, people say, well, pastor, you don't understand. You're right, I don't. But I don't understand for the reason that you think I don't understand. I don't understand how you can read the same Bible that I do and come to different conclusions. I don't understand why you can be concerned and worried over your life when the Bible says not to. I don't under, you understand what I'm saying? You think that I don't understand how great your giant is, how big your problem is, what you're going through. You think nobody else has ever had to stand through. You understand what I'm saying? That you're somehow or another been chosen to suffer for Jesus at some level when I don't understand why you don't understand what the Bible says. You understand? Do you understand? Amen. You know, it's, it's, it's like trying to herd cats once in a while. Getting people to understand that you are victorious in Jesus. Amen. That everything that you do is blessed. But we've got to stand strong on what the word says. Listen, when David was coming down off the mountain, now listen to me, he is running at a physical giant. Let me ask you, where and how much fear and doubt do you think he had? He had none. He had none. Because if he had had any, he wouldn't have went down. Amen? If he had any, he wouldn't have went down. So let me tell you, some of you, start running. Get to running. Running at your problems. Running at your giants. Run at them. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the, in the power of his might, in his word, in his strength. My Bible says that in my weakness, he's made strong. When you don't think you can run, run. When you don't think you can walk, run. When you're struggling to crawl, run. Run to Jesus. And running to Jesus is running at your problems. Amen. My Bible says my grace is sufficient. My Bible, come on now, start quoting what your Bible says. Learn to stand in faith, believing all things work together. You see, God is still in control. And the same God. You know, we go through the word. David and Goliath, the sword that was meant to destroy David, destroyed Goliath. The furnace that was meant to destroy Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That furnace made those men. It elevated them to positions they would have never achieved without the furnace. How about if they had ran from their furnace? Amen. Come on, you guys remember Jonah and the whale, amen? You realize when they threw him into the ocean, they threw him in to die? And do you realize that same whale that swallowed him, that when it first swallowed him, we were all thinking, oh boy, that's all over. But it was the whale that delivered him. It was the whale that took him back to where God wanted him to be. It was this, mm. so I think you're getting it this morning. You're not getting that what God, what Satan intended to destroy, God used to elevate. God used to promote. So how about we stop complaining so much about our giant and start praising and worshiping our Savior and realizing and understanding that, listen, 
fire always proceeds promotion. God's got a new level that he's bringing you to. God's got a new plateau for a minute that you're going to be at. He's got something that you've never dreamed possible. He's looking at you more than you think possible. He wants to take your crooked paths and make them straight. He wants, come on now, he wants every, he wants all for you. You just got to learn to run at your giant in the name of Jesus and quit saying, I come at you in me. Say, I come at you in the name of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I stand strong in my faith, believing that the same God that delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the same God that delivered Joseph, the same God that delivered David, the same God that delivered Jonah, the same God, come on now, that rose Jesus from the dead, that same God is still on the throne this morning. He is still working miracles this morning. He's still moving for his people this morning. He's just waiting for you to start running. Hallelujah. Let's get some track shoes on and get after it. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand.